results in deaths or sometimes permanent injuries to innocent civilians who lose their lives as a result of the operations of the security forces of the Saudi led, Saudi dominated security forces. And I hope people realize what an what, what awful thing it must be to live in those conditions day after day, day after day. But now I have great pleasure in calling on our next speaker, who is Mrs. Jalida Al Salman. And Mrs. Al Salman is a former prisoner of conscience, deputy head of the Teachers Union in Bahrain. Good morning. Thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about women's situation and education in Bahrain. After three years of non-stop struggle in Bahrain towards justice and democracy, freedom and equality, and despite all atrocities committed against people of Bahrain and all aspects of the Bahraini societies, with unusual silence, if not support, to the ruling regime in Bahrain by most Western powers and media channels, the struggle continues, and so does the atrocities. Women, education, are not an exception of all what's happened in Bahrain. An overview of what's happened to women in Bahrain. At least 328 women from all categories were imprisoned, and still, due to their participation in demonstration, although they were practicing their constitutional rights. They were tortured, executed, insulted, and sexually harassed. 14 died due to toxic tear gas. One was directly shot. Just now we saw the video where just recently 52 years woman was dead because of raiding her house. Large number were sacked since 2011. At least 127 nurses, 55 educators. Lots were demoted. At least 23 in the educational field were demoted. 70 nurses were shipped around. This is a picture to show the situation of women in Bahrain. The first picture, the big picture, is while they're marching, and we have one right police is hitting a woman, and the other one is just me and Rola, the one at the bottom there, is just me and Dr. Rola, the day of our release. You can see here how the other photos there, how women are being treated while uh, during detention. These are some photos also, what happens to women in Bahrain. You can see, you can have an overview just by looking at these pictures. You can see how peaceful they are and the tear gas, how it's affected. Women in most active societies were attacked because of their role. Head of the nursing society, Dr. Rola Safar, vice president, me, myself. And of course, our societies were banned. Hatred campaign against some activities started by who called themselves the human rights NGOs in Bahrain. This is just a picture of what's happened recently in Bahrain. For, I choose just an example, it's me and Rola. And this is the hatred campaign against the activists in Bahrain. I choose just two women of them. Of course, there are plenty. I will check now to the educational field. I will talk about teachers and students. 80% were subjected to different kind of violation in the educational field. More than 63 were, were questioned either in police station or in illegally formed dis discipline board. 50% were subjected to 10 days suspension and salary cut. 30% were forcibly transferred to another work places. 1% was demoted. 5% were sent to court. 3% were dismissed. Most of them were, were reinstated. Nine teachers are now, right now, in a prison. That's what we know. They are, it's not the whole count. Fifteen teachers, as documented, were dismissed on the basis of practicing their rights. Most recently, Ahmed Habib and Ali Nasif, both of these two teachers were dismissed because they were defending their brothers of being det detained, and then they themselves being detained. Two teachers were arrested from their work cases. Teaching profession is close to Bahraini graduates as Ministry of Education works hard to import teachers. Samples of teachers who are in prison, Mahdi Abudib, who is the Bahrain Teacher Society president. We have Ahmed Rabi, who is sentenced to 15 years. We have Ammar Makki, he is in prison because of tweeting 
and Ahmed Mirza, he was arrested from his work in school. Mahdi Abu Deeb is serving five years imprisonment for speaking up teachers and people rights, whereas pro-government unionists were convicted from scam, serve only one day, and he was out of prison. Mahdi is still in unstable health condition. He is in an overall crowded cell, and by arresting him and dissolving Bahrain Teacher Society, teachers in Bahrain lost their representatives. These graphs show some percentage or numbers about students in Bahrain. 400 were suspended from University of Bahrain in 2011. Seven were sent to military court. 144 were convicted and they were sent to the civilian court, it's also from University of Bahrain. 80 of them were arrested. Till now, we have at least nine students expelled from the university and we have more than 12 in prison right now. About the school students who are under 18, the documented cases is 120, which means that the only cases who, were, who went to the societies and documented their cases. Of course, we believe that the number is much more than that, since the, we know that every house, at least in Bahrain, they have one. This is some photos for the University of Bahrain student, students who are in jail right now. This is just a sample to see what kind of jails we have in Bahrain. This is not a school class, this is a court where more than nine of very young kids were sent to court. The other photo here, where one bus, school bus, was raided and all the students were sent to the police station. Right now we have at least the students who were arrested from their schools. That's Al Jabriya Secondary School, which made school and fire environment unsafe. Few were sacked. 90 of them were sent to interrogation and Ministry of Education. Schools, of course, are under attack. Have an overview, overview about the school environment we have in Bahrain, either outside the school or inside the school. You can see the... No, double, double. Bad, bad. You can see the tear gas, the school buses, how it's raining, the riot police, how they are standing outside the school, and the main picture there is one student, he was chased by riot police and then he was hit while he was out of school. This is a sample of the Bahrain University of Bahrain students who were expelled and they were asked to pay their scholarship back and they are being at court right now because they want them to pay back the money. Recently, we have two more students of the University of Bahrain this is Ahmed Nasif and Ali Sami. Both of them are from civil engineering and they are being arrested and under the terrorist probe. I'm going to finish my speech. Um, I think it's a very good opportunity to say that I am a live, a live example of the atrocity against women workers, teachers in Bahrain. I was arrested three times, tortured, ill-treated, forced to sign confessions while being blindfolded and denied to any access to my lawyer and family. I saw my lawyer only the first time on the military court session, the first session when he came in and he was asking, who is Jalila? I experienced injustice in both military court and civilian court. Civilian court is just a name, where in fact they are just the other face of the military court, where the judge refuses to sign, to put in a minute whatever he thinks it will be on our behalf. About what's the current situation in Bahrain and the dialogue and negotiation. What educational sector is going through gives an indication about the mentality that's governing Bahrain. Without a change in that mentality, it won't be realistic to expect any real changes. This applies to the dialogue, of course. What's needed is a genuine dialogue and negotiation where the government not imposes its vision on the parties. It is surprising to see that Minister of Education, who is responsible of all the violation in the educational field, and Minister of Justice, who was on the national TV, accusing the doctors before any interrogation took place to be the government representative in that second dialogue. Lots believe that the negotiation is a way to reach the solution in our crisis in Bahrain. 
But under the current circumstances, it is very difficult. It is just a propaganda to clear the government image. There should be some trust measures that should be taking place on the ground so the people will have faith in what we call dialogue or negotiation or whatever it is, such as releasing the political prisoner, all the political prisoners, because uh, uh, if, there, if the case was not like that in Bahrain, no one will be in jail right now. So all of them need to be released. Leaders of the movement should be at the negotiation table. Withdrawal of the military signs from streets, stop collective punishment, stop raiding houses. I think the government, if they are willing to have a real dialogue, they can do much. Thank you very much. Jalila uh, Hassaman, I must say that if we had the information about the women, the teachers, and the students in leaflets, we could do a lot with the public here, with the National Union of Teachers, National Union of Students, uh, National Council of Women, and the organizations that would respond to the information that we've just heard. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can collect all that information and we can embody it in leaflets that we can send out to the public in each of these fields because you know, certainly we did have a response when the, when the doctors were imprisoned. We had an excellent response from medical organizations yeah. such as the British Medical Council and the various unions that represent medical professionals. So I think we could do the same uh, with the information that you've just given us. We can expand that into communications that we can send to the organizations representing these communities in the UK, like the women, the teachers, and the students. So thank you very much for that information.